Uh, talk Pats Raiders with Andy Gray. Oh my gosh. Can you and every other, yeah. and, and seriously, you and your, your fine feathered friends on Twitter <laughs> going back and forth <laughs> with this Chris Berman. Yeah. 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 Are you going to barf all over yourself after you do that now? It sounds like you got indigestion. Uh. Clean it up. Correct. All right, so this is cool that we got to see the Raiders on Monday Night Football. You could hone in on the Pats' next opponent. Yeah. More impressive than I thought. What were your reactions to what this team looks like? Honestly, Yanni, I didn't really know what the Raiders were going to be coming into this year, right? And they go across the country, and they beat Carolina. Carolina's first game, new coach. We can put that in perspective. Well, they did on Monday night where you have the emotions of a city tied into, mm. we've been waiting for this moment yeah. forever and nobody can no show up. And I mean, it was depressing almost, <laughs> but I thought they showed great resiliency and played well. The Raiders are fast. You know they're good offensively. The big question with them is, what Derek Carr are you getting? Mm. You know, it's like the old Two-Face episode in Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Sometimes Yamahama, it's fright night. And sometimes he looks like the girl who's the bell of the ball. So that's the thing with Derek Carr, man. It's the true roll of the yeah. dice. Darren Waller, uh, Bill Belichick singing his praises this week. Uh, what a tough tight end to game plan for. What are the, the Pats are going to face a lot of these. They, they're going to have mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey. They're going to have uh, Kittle and so forth. How are they going to attack Waller? Well, I think that's where Joan Williams comes in. And look, you can go back to, you know, my name. I hear a win. My mind says the win. Oh, they didn't get a keep to lead to come in yeah. to be the tight end slayer. So now it's got to be really a combination probably of Joan Williams, maybe a little bit of Devin McCourty mixed in. But I really think Williams is going to get the first crack. And Yanni, look, there are lots of ways, as we learned over the years, with Gronk playing here, there are ways to slow down mm. a tight end. You can hit him at the line of scrimmage. You try to go contact just inside those five yards. There are lots of different techniques that I think the Patriots defense can employ to disrupt him, but make no question about it. The guy's a real weapon. Happened. And when it got down to it in the third quarter against New Orleans, they couldn't stop that guy. All right, I want to talk about the narrative uh, behind the Patriots right now. Uh, despite them losing Sunday, and we all can agree they played pretty well, uh, they played well. They didn't win the game, though. It seems like nationally people are now jumping on the Pats bandwagon because Cam has proven that he can play. Um, where do you stand on, are the Patriots now becoming overhyped two weeks into the season? Well, look, I, I think we've lost some perspective here, right? Because now it's the whole, well, look at these wide receivers and look what Cam Newton does with them. Well, if anybody would actually open their eyes and watch and put some deductive reasoning into it, what they did with Tom Brady and what they asked the wide receivers to do is like speak in Chinese and now they're speaking Italian. It's so different from what you're requiring the wide receivers to do with Tom Brady where it's precision and being in the right spot. You're going to read coverage like he does. This is a little more reactionary where the quarterback, mm. Cam, is a little more in control. So when people are looking at this, it's the whole, well, how come he can do it with these wide receivers? Well, I don't know. Last year at one point in time, Brady was dealing with Josh Gordon, Antonio Brown, Julian Edelman, Mohamed Sanu, a bunch of guys where only one of them is here right now. I mean, what, what Tom Brady had to do with the success of Demir Bird is beyond me. Right. But when we get caught in the narrative versus what's actually going on, that's the kind of Momo commentary that you get from dumb, dumb media people, let alone fans. <laughs> All right, the topic of the day. What was Bill Belichick wearing this morning? It looked like he got ripped up by a bear. This is awesome. <laughs> the way this guy looked. I mean, look, you know what he did? He showed us how he really feels inside. But that, <laughs> what you saw Wednesday was morning. the real Belichick. Game plan Wednesday day. morning, hair all over the place. Like he just got done walking on the treadmill, yeah. breaking down video and stuff. And you're right, it did look like he got mauled <laughs> by a bear. But come on, that's probably the that's probably the first sweatshirt that uh, the late Donnie Brocher gave him whenever he came up here to coach New England. <laughs> and he doesn't want to let it go. I got one of those. I wear it around whenever I was allowed to go in the office. I wore it all the time. Giant holes in oh the my. elbows and stuff. So all all of us who have been quarantining have probably worn some terrible things in our homes. He was on a uh, Zoom call with the national and local media, but Patriots.com say the that sweatshirt originates from week one in 2013. He also wore it in the Super Bowl loss to the uh, to the Eagles. So this is about a seven-year-old sweatshirt. Do you think it was top of the pile? 
or to go back to Seinfeld, maybe he just did. It's ahead of rotation in the in the cycle. On, on the back of the chair in the office, and it was oh, pfft, I got to go talk to these rubes. Let me put on something other than a sleeveless T-shirt. That's my guess. All right, hard hitting journalism right now, breaking down Bill Belichick's outfits. Thanks so much, Gresh, and we're back with more on the sports wrap right after this.